All right, I have uh, <clears throat> 10 seconds of my timer here, so I think I'm going to get started. Um, so, uh, hello, everybody. Uh, so, the title of my talk is that when they can read in the end, tweaking Ruby garbage collector parameters for fun, speed, and profit. Uh, my part is the fun part. For my boss, it's really speed and profit. So that's how I got, got to convince him to give me time to work on that. So before I start, let me just um, as, um, tell a little bit of a story here. Uh, so who is here? All right. All right. It's better? OK, I'm going to try to stay s still in here. Uh, so who is here for the very first time? All right, it's a pretty good audience, and uh, I, that, that's, that's something that's really amazing uh, to me about RailsConf. Um, last year was my first RailsConf, and I, have a really, I had a really great time. I, I, th I thought it was an awesome conference. And after it finished, I, uh, I decided that this year I wanted to come here as a speaker. Uh, and uh, and uh, as a matter of fact, I'm here. So uh, if any of you guys that are here for the very first time, if you like the conference, and after that, uh, you think it's really awesome, you're not alone. A lot of people is going to think like that. But if you decided to come next year as a, talk, as a speaker, um, I can assure you that's, that's totally possible. And uh, if you have any questions about that, if you want to talk, if you really get interested into that, let me know. I can share a lot of uh, the road that took me uh, here. And um, so uh, with that out of the way, my name is Elio Kola. Uh, I've been doing software development for about 15, 15 years. I spent about 10 years doing C, C++, Solaris, Linux environment before I switched to Ruby on Rails. It's been about five, six years that um, I've been working for Ruby on Rails. And um, um, I go by that thing on the internet uh, if you want to find me. Uh, uh, so all right, let's get started. And let's talk about the Ruby garbage collector. Uh, so throughout the presentation, I'm going to go through some of these terms. Uh, GC garbage collector, IGMDC is the uh, restricted generation of garbage collector. Uh, the RINC DC, it's um, the restricted incremental garbage collector. COW is copy and write technique. AB is a batch band mark tool, just a couple of terms. Um, uh, my talk is going to follow these topics. Um, so why I'm here talking about garbage collector, despite my little story at the beginning. Uh, something a little bit about the history of uh, how the Ruby garbage collector algorithm evolved through the uh, Ruby releases, and uh, some configuration parameters and how they evolved, and um, my approach into measuring and tuning this thing. That's that's uh, these these uh, these options is going to be how I, I got to this talk, how I created all these, and how I learned about all these. And at the end, I hope I have some time to uh, for some questions and answers. Uh, uh, all right, so why I'm here and why garbage collector? So once upon a time, there was a Rails app. Uh, there was one, two, three, four, five Rails app. And uh, they were all in production, living, live, and prosper. And, uh, uh, but we didn't have a lot of uh, uh, inside story on how they were behaving. So we proactively in the company decided to install one of these full, uh, fancy, full of fancy charts monitoring tools. Uh, and then. Uh, that's, all, that's how all these got started. We installed this uh, monitoring tool and we started seeing, uh, I got exposed to, to, uh, to this information. Uh, and I was looking into those things and I was like, all right, uh, on the left side I have everything mostly blue, it only says GC runs, on the right side I have these mostly yellow, a little bit of blue, and it shows uh, minor and major, so, hmm, what is that? Uh, I don't know, uh, but uh, sounds like something interesting to find out. And I also saw these on the left side. You can see that the average is um, 80 times. That's how many times the, the GC is running per 100 transaction. And the right side is running 46. So like, hmm, all right. The right side seems better. So why my left side app is not behaving as my right side app? So I want to find that out. And up until that time, I have enough, enough questions that uh, got me going uh, and uh, got me interested in these. Uh, so I did a lot of research. I read a lot. I Googled everything I could find about Ruby Garbage Collector. And I had a really great time. I really, really have a great time learning all that. Uh, it was pretty awesome. I guess I was a little bit bored at work as well. Uh, but uh, I, and then I, wanted, I decided that I wanted to share that because I didn't, despite having found a lot of documentation, I didn't see a lot of people talking about the Ruby Garbage Collector. And uh, 
And finally, my talk got accepted, right? So if, if that didn't happen, I wouldn't be here. So, uh, so I'm going to tell, before I dive into um, how I approach these things, I'm just going to give you guys a little uh, glance on how the, um, the algorithms evolved through the Ruby releases. So let me ask a question before here. So how many of you guys here ever changed tune and Ruby garbage clock in production? All right, there is a, there is a handful, a dozen people. Um, all right, that's interesting. Uh, one, you know, one of the meetups that I did in, in DC, I think one guy in the room, but it was a much smaller room anyway. Uh, so this, this part of the presentation, there's going to be a lot of information. I don't expect you guys to follow everything, to get everything on your mind. Um, I, I'm only going to glance through these algorithms. I'm not going to explain uh, them uh, in details. But this, if that's something that you, you get interested in, you get curious about that, just let me know. There is a lot of documentation that I can point you out. You can Google around it as well and, uh, and find that. But um, uh, I have some, some, some reference that you guys can, uh, can use, and I can point that to you. So uh, basically, 1.8, the algorithm is uh, simple market sweep. Uh, 193 is the lazy sweep. 2.0 and the bitmap masking. Um, the 2.1, Ruby 2.1 is the gem DC. Uh, Ruby 2.2 come with the ink DC and symbol DC. Uh, so during my, uh, uh, my research, I came across uh, a mom's good blog. And um, I didn't come across this blog at the beginning of my research. It was close to the end. It was after I read a lot about uh, the Ruby garbage collection, mostly about the uh, generation increment, gen DC and ink DC, the generation and incremental garbage collector. That's where you find more documentation about it. And, um, and then at, towards to the end of my research, um, I came across this blog, and uh, I am a vis visual person. And when I, I saw this, and I saw how he concisely and visually expressed the difference between these different algorithms, it all clicked in my head. And it also gave me some uh, perspective on how prior to 2.1 and 2.0x, how those algorithms evolved. And uh, so for the next couple of slides, I'm just going to give a, show a couple of screenshots from his blog uh, on how he showed that in, uh, uh, it, it's in a visual way. It's just, uh, it should be used to digest, even though there is a lot of, uh, behind the scenes. So 1.8 is simple mark and sweep. Uh, so basically, you have a mark phase and sweep phase during that time. There is this stop the road. That means that your code is not running because the garbage cart is, is running. And it marks a bunch of objects, and then the ones that are, are not be, being referenced, they got sweeped. Uh, and then your code uh, uh, resumes. Uh, 193 is the lazy sweep. The main difference in here is the mark phase is still the same, but the sweep it's doing lazily. So um, as the objects are required, they are released and they are swapped uh, for you to use. And um, that's, uh, that's the 193 lazy sweep. Uh, two zero bitmap masking, this is just about memory management. It's uh, improved memory management for uh, gems and applications that do fork and do those kind of things. And also the mark phase is rewritten to be non-recursive. Uh, that's what you got in there, but the, the, the main logic about the mark and sweep phase uh, remain the same. Uh, and if you plug a 2.0 application in one of these fancy, full of fancy charts, monitoring tool, that's what you see. Uh, you see GC runs. Um, this is from a simple application that I have on my machine. Uh, Ruby 2.1, here's where the juice starts. Um, so uh, generation garbage collector. Uh, the idea here that objects die young, you probably, got, uh, probably already heard about that. And if an object survives a GC run, it gets promoted to an old, old generation objects. So next time it's run, a minor GC, it doesn't go through all the objects, only the young objects. So you traverse a, a, a smaller list of objects, and so we spend less time. Um, and um, that's, uh, that's kind of the whole idea of the, the generation DC. Again, there is a lot more into that. Uh, I'm just going to go into this uh, to give you guys some, some, some basics. Uh, the 2.2 uh, is, has the ink DC and the symbol DC. Symbol DC, hey, just get collected now. So if you're a symbol lover, um, you, you don't run the risk of a DOS attack crashing your app anymore. So the symbols are going to get collected. Uh, and the incremental DC. So the incremental DC is all about um, shortening the pause times. As you can see, it's just a replacement of a long mark pause is replaced by a few small mark phases. Um, and from uh, the, the implementer, uh, Quisha Sasada, which I think is here in the room, 
uh, uh, this is not a silver bullet. It's not a guarantee that's going to increase your throughput and improve your re web response time. Um, so it was all about replacing a long pause to a small uh, pause. And um, if, you, if you plug a 2.1 and 2.2 application, uh, and also 2.3, uh, uh, into one of these full of fancy charts monitoring tool, that's what you see. You see major and minor. The major uh, should run less often than the minor, and um, that's, that's how it looks. Uh, so uh, a couple of configuration parameters. The same way that the algorithm evolved and got more complex and faster, also the configuration parameters they evolved, they grow in number and, and, and complexity. Uh, in the 2.0, we have these three uh, parameter, configuration parameters, malloc limit, hip mean slots, and uh, free mean. This is all about how many slots um, you allocate during the, your application startup and how many slots needs to be free, uh, the minimum number of slots that needs to be free after a GC runs. Um, so it's going to release a couple of memory, but is, there is not that amount of uh, free slots. It's just going to allocate more for your application to use. Uh, and Ruby 2.0x will have these three parameters. As you grew to 2.1 and above, uh, we have now 11 configuration parameters. Uh, there is some documentation and explanation about all these parameters. I'm not going to go into detail here because you're probably going to leave the room if I do that. Uh, <laughs> So, but uh, basically, those are the parameters. Uh, heap needs lots, heap freeze lot, heap growth factor, heap growth max lots, heap old old generation object limit factor. Uh, this is a pretty, one, pretty, pretty cool one. Uh, uh, I, I kind of like it. Uh, so and now you have these other three sets of configuration parameters that generate that are related to a young and old generation objects: limit, limit malloc, limit max, malloc, limit growth factor, uh, and these things. Are, uh, I didn't poke around all of them. I kind of changed most of them and tested during my, uh, my, my when I was doing all this work. But um, uh, at the end, um, I didn't end up uh, changing all of them. All of them had default values. So if you don't change, there's going to be a default experience. And um, but sometimes that's uh, is not your best uh, option. If you look at um, at the Ruby source code, the gc.c file, and I have the URL for the references in there, that's what you're going to see. On the two on X and, and above, uh, you have this long C commented section that uh, lists all the configuration parameters, some documentation. And if you see the, uh, if you can read that, the, the first one, the needs lots, is initial allocations lots. Um, the one that I thought was cool was the GC heap old object limit factor, which is do a full GC when the number of old objects is more than R, R times N where R is this factor, and N is the number of old objects thus just after last full GC. I, first of all, this, this, this description here, when I read that, I was like, holy shit, that's pretty cool. Um, so as, a, as I said, I, I worked for almost a decade with C and C++. So going back to these and reading this stuff and compiling the Ruby source code and, and, and making uh, that compiled version, of Ruby be used on my Rails app, it was, was pretty awesome to me. Uh, before that, I never really went back to C and C++, so that kind of helped me have some fun during this, uh, during this process. Uh, and at the end, oh, if you're wondering, uh, that's how you actually test that. So uh, if, you wanna, if you wanna change some of these configuration parameters and, and test that in your application, your laptop, uh, that's what you do. You just those are all environment variables on your Linux machine. So if you export that variable with some value and then do Rails S, then the, when the, the Ruby VM starts and the garbage cart gets set up, it's going to use going to pick up those those variables from from the environment and it's going to create the memories accordingly to that. If you want to change them, you stop Rails C, export this value for different value, and restart it again. So uh, for testing your laptop, that's that's pretty much is uh, it's pretty much what you do. Uh, so um, with that kind of, um, um, I finished all this stuff that I wanted to talk, the glance to. If, if, that's, if those algorithms, uh, details about that is something that you get curious and you're curious to learn more about it, uh, I can point you guys to some of the documentation, but I also I strongly recommend you guys check out Eric Weinstein talk, uh, RubyConf last year. He gave a talk on garbage collector as well, but his approach was explaining more into details how the, all these algorithms work. Um, so I, I was here, I saw his talk, and uh, I, I watched his talk after I've been to all these, um, learning about all this stuff. So 
uh, watching him explain these algorithms was, was pretty cool. Uh, I really like it. I really felt like I was back in college watching my uh, CS teacher explaining algorithms. Uh, it was, uh, was pretty cool. I like it. Uh, and I, as a matter of fact, I don't like everything, but uh, the things that, I, that I'm talking about, probably there is a reason for that. Uh, and uh, so I think his talk was pretty cool. I really like it. Uh, so now let's go back here to where everything started. Um, so as I mentioned, I got exposed to these, these things that you've seen. Um, on the left side you have the GC runs, and the right, right side you have my, my major and minor, and those averages on top, 80 versus 40, it kind of bugged me. I was like, hmm, that sounds like there is some here, something here for me to improve. Uh, but I wasn't sure whether those numbers were normal. Maybe I'm in a normal scenario. Uh, during my research, I couldn't find any documentation or anything that gave me a clue that, all right, if you're running on average from zero to 15, you are awesome. If you're from 15 to 25, you're great. 25 to 75, it's okay. And above 25, 75, it's, you're really bad. I couldn't find anything or get to any knowledge about that. So um, I wasn't sure whether my 46 hour was great or was really bad. Uh, maybe tomorrow I'm going to get a call overnight saying that my API is down, this, the service is down, and I'm going to have to wake up in the middle of the night to fix this application and try to find out why the machine is dying. I wasn't sure, and that was one of the reasons that why we set up, we uh, installed this monitoring tool on our application, because we want to get a more intel and more practically measure and see how healthy our applications were. Uh, and um, so, uh, I went on research mode. That's what got into me all this. I read, I studied um, um, uh, all the, 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 the source code. I, co I compiled the Ruby source code. I, I did all of that, and I, as I mentioned, I, had, I have a really got, great time. Um, and after a lot of research, and um, I realized, all right, that Ruby 2.0x, I'm not gonna worry about that. That's gonna get into upgrade path. It's gonna go to 2.1, 2.2, two, 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 and then the 1.2.2, two, two, all right, let's, um, you find out what I'm going to do. But that application on 2.1x, as I mentioned, I didn't know whether 46 was normal. Maybe 46 is super great. I'm in a really good spot. I uh, don't need to worry about this, but I wasn't sure. I needed to find out. Uh, so what did I do? All right, and I, then I thought to myself, all right, let me run all these on my laptop, do some tests, and do some load tests, and some basic load tests. I'm not going to go too crazy, not spend too much time. Uh, and maybe I'm going to find out something. Maybe that's going to give me some clue to whether 40, it's good or it's bad, or maybe I'm gonna realize that I'm just crazy and um, go do something else. Uh, so I did that, I did a lot of tests. And at the end, that's what happened. I mean, still on my laptop, despite everything that I do, uh, the GC was running 3.99 on average. I was like, hmm, all right. So it's not like what I'm seeing in my production apps. My pro production apps are running 40 times out of, on average 40 times out of 100 transactions. Uh, and, um, and then what did I do? A couple more days go by, testing, imaging, analyzing data. And to some, during that process, what I realized is, right, so the test that I'm doing on my laptop is now, it's, 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 not, it's not the same as my AWS servers. It's not the same architecture, hardware architecture that my, of my production environment. Maybe the test that I'm doing on my staging environment, which is, not, uh, which is shared between a bunch of applications, uh, has the similar architecture. So maybe those tests are gonna be better than what I do on my laptop. Uh, I don't have the same amount of data. In production, I have a freaking amount of data, a huge amount of data. Uh, and, maybe, and, and I didn't have that neither on my laptop nor on my staging environment. Uh, and my AB calls, maybe they're not reflecting exactly how my endpoints are being used for my users. And uh, so then I, I, kind of, I kind of got to, um, uh, to the point, right? I'm not gonna try too much to get to, uh, to simulate my production environment, how much pressure I'm putting on GC on the production in my testing environment, because I may never get there. Uh, and um, so what did I do? I slapped on it. I said, all right, I'm doing too many tests, I have too much stuff on my head, and I needed to go do something else. And my boss was bugging me about that other feature that I was working on. Um, and, uh, and then uh, during those meetings, after those meetings end, uh, a couple of us hang out in the meeting room and I, I tried to talk to, my, uh, to some of my teammates about the, the thing that I was trying to do and try to get a sense of, right, maybe they are gonna say, dude, you're crazy. 
Forget about this. Or maybe they're going to say, oh, yeah, it makes sense. All right, what are you saying? Your theory kind of makes sense. So have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? Have you seen these or that? So I tried to talk to them and explain to them what I was doing because maybe that's going to help clear my mind and give me um, 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 an idea on what I'm going to do next. And um, what really helped me after that was really to plan what I was going to do. Because up to, up to this point, I have a lot of information about how these algorithms work, the parameters that I can change, some of the parameters that I change and, and work and doesn't work, and it makes a difference, it doesn't make any difference. So I've done a lot of tests and I had a lot of stuff. And uh, planning what I was going to do next and focus on that, it kind of helped me a lot to, uh, um, to, to set myself on a path where I was able to find something that I thought was cool. Uh, so, and then after that, either this or that's going to happen. Either you're going to see something that you weren't seeing before, and it was there, right in my face, uh, and I wasn't seeing that. So, on my dev environment, uh, the same fancy monitoring tool was showing that my object allocation per transaction is on a range of 13,000 objects, while in my production it was 94,000. It's like, oh, all right, that might be why the GC is not running as crazy as, as is in production, because my backend doesn't have a lot of my, in my, my testing environment, I don't have the same amount of data, and so I'm manipulating less objects, and I'm spitting out a JSON a response much smaller than what it's doing. And maybe my AB calls is not actually trying to get as much data as my real users. Uh, and then when I did that, what happened? Uh, I got to something that was very similar to what I was seeing on my, on my production environment. And that was, I was still on my testing environment. So, uh, and then I got to a point where, all right, I have an environment in here that's, that simulates the exact same GC pressure, GC, uh, uh, same pressures in the GC, garbage, in the Ruby uh, garbage collector, that now I can control, I can test, I can replicate, and if I make any change, I can find out whether that's going to improve or not, if that's going to release the pressure on the garbage collector or not. Uh, so I was pretty happy about that. If that doesn't happen, if you can't find uh, a scenario in your testing environment that kind of uh, 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 replicate in some level of similarity what you have in your production environment, then you establish that baseline and then you work on that. And then you see that if you can make changes on that, uh, it's going to improve or not. Uh, but if you can't replicate kind of, a, if you don't have a similar environment to what you see in your production environment, then you kind of have a, a, a stronger case to make to you whether the change that you're going to do in that is going to affect, is going to have the same effect um, in your production environment. Uh, but anyway, uh, so I did got that. I did uh, get into that on my, uh, actually, both on my laptop and on, on the staging environment when I added more data into my database and uh, when I changed a little bit of how my AB calls were. And after you, I got to that, then it's about change, measure, and analyze. Change, measure, and analyze. Do that over and over again. Don't do that when you're hungry because it doesn't work. Uh, uh, do that early in the morning uh, only. Uh, and analyze what you're reading. Try to read your scene. Remember, I spent a lot of days looking to those graphics, and I didn't see for a long time, I didn't see that my dev environment, I was allocating 13,000 objects, and my production environment was 94. So it was there, black and white, uh, maybe kind of grayish and white, but uh, I didn't see that. So you have to analyze, especially if you generate a lot of data, um, you have to take your time to, to let your brain to digest all that information. And, um, uh, one thing that really helped me is some of the numbers that I was getting during my tests, I literally wrote, wrote down in a post-it near my laptop, and I kept reading, kept looking into that from time to time, All right? This use case, this test scenario, I got this number. These other tests, I got these. And I, I literally wrote down in there. And that kind of helped me to uh, try to extract some knowledge from there and, and get some clue out of that. So, uh, and um, also the other thing is uh, that that's something that I always do is if you're testing these things, uh, and trying to extract knowledge from the test that you're doing, uh, try to do one change at a time. Because, because then you don't have to worry about, oh, which change I did affect that. So uh, if you do one at a time, uh, it's kind of a little painful, te uh, tedious, but um, uh, it's, it's, um, it's, a good, um, it's a good thing. Again, this is not an advice to you. This is just something that worked for me in this particular environment, in this particular scenario. Um, you probably may have other different uh, ways to test and to approach some of these things, but this is how I felt comfortable and how I was able to uh, validate uh, myself and the things I was doing um, while I was doing and learning about this. Uh, 
So uh, again, uh, either this or that will happen. That's what I mentioned. And uh, if, um, if you find something, in my case, I did find a couple of configuration parameters that improved my response time. Uh, and I was really happy about that. Uh, if that really happens to you in something that you're doing, investigating, document it nice, share with your team, make a small presentation inside your company about that. Uh, make a small talk out of it. And maybe you, next year you're here at RailsConf uh, speaking about it. Uh, and uh, if you do that, especially in the company that I, I was working at the time, after all that work that I've done, it was kind of pretty easy for me to deploy this stuff into production. Uh, and or if you don't find anything, then you, you, you still document something. If you went through a lot of time, if you learned, if you, did, if you tried a lot of different things, and it still didn't work out, you still couldn't find anything, document the same way. Because maybe there's a lot of people in the world trying to do the same thing uh, before you uh, or alongside you. And that if you share that information, maybe you're going to save a lot of people's time. Or maybe you're going to get some feedback from, from the community on what else you should do to solve the problem you're trying to solve. Uh, and um, so uh, that's how I went by all this stuff. And um, now from the next uh, slides, there are all going to be um, a couple of charts that is very easy for easy. And if you, if you guys don't want to do some of these things, you can pick back on uh, some of these images and you can send that to your boss. I'm pretty sure your boss is going to like these charts. And, uh, and uh, maybe that helps you to convince them to let you poke around some of this stuff. Uh, at the end, so these were the parameters that I changed. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, at the end, these was uh, the parameters that I changed uh, that uh, I made all the way to production. Uh, HIP is in each slot, free slot, my lock limit, and limit max. Uh, I'm not sure if all of them actually, uh, one or two of the, these combined uh, was the one that resulted into uh, the improvements, but um, these are the ones that after long, a lot of testing, those are the ones that uh, I decided to make into production. Uh, so now I'm just going to show you guys a little bit of um, some comparison uh, uh, and some charts, some nice charts. Uh, at least I think they're nice. Uh, so it's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show, I'm going to compare Ruby 20X, 200 with 217, before any tuning, D4 experience. Imagine that you have an app with Ruby 2.0.0, and you migrate that, uh, that Ruby version to 2.1.7, that's what you, you should see, you expect to see in your application. Then I, I'm gonna compare uh, Ruby two, the same app with Ruby 2.1.7 uh, before and after turning these configuration parameters. And then it's gonna be the time of 2.2.3 before and after, and 2.1.7 and 2.2.3 after the tuning. Um, just to find out how they compare and how those algorithms uh, play a role into uh, spending less time doing garbage collecting. Uh, so, as you can see here, uh, on the left side, I can see, um, on the left side is Ruby 2.0x, on the right side here, it's Ruby 2.1.7. And that's how everything started. Um, I had two apps with two versions of Ruby. And in this case, it's the same application when I run and I do some load testing with Ruby 2.0.0, and the same application after upgrading Ruby version to 2.1.7, and out of the gate, D4 experience, the time, the average of, of GC runs drop from 80 to 40. Uh, that's what you get just by upgrading 2.0 to 2.1x. Uh, and uh, so here now is an, a different metric. Uh, again, on top is 2.0.0, on the bottom is 2.1.7. And this metric is the time spent in garbage collector per percentage of your wall clock time. I'm pretty sure somewhere there is a really nice explanation of wall clock time really means. Uh, but um, but that's, the, that's a metric that they, they show up. Um, if, if that's something that you're curious, just uh, I have some more documentation about that as well. Uh, but um, basically, by dropping, by changing the Ruby, it drops from 18% average to uh, three percent average. Just remember, this is an average of a percentage, uh, of a metric based on a percentage. So um, I have to keep our expectations uh, regarding to this one. But this is a more is a easier uh, metric. Web response time. That this one is kind of very easy to digest. And if if you can see on top the dark brown one, it's the time doing garbage collector. And you can see that on top you pretty much spend close to forty milliseconds per transaction uh, doing garbage collector. That's 40 milliseconds of your web response time. 
And if you change from your application from 200 to 21 x uh, that drops to uh, well below 20 milliseconds. So you're getting in there close to 25, 30 milliseconds. Uh, and in this case, you can see that the web response time goes from 150, 156, 156 to 133 milliseconds. So you're totally improving your, your, your uh, web response time. Uh, and uh, so 217 before and after. Uh, here you, you can also see um, on, the, on the left side is before, on the right side is after, and the average of runs goes down from 40 to 24. Uh, these data is from my sample application that I run to get these charts to put in this presentation. What I really got into my real application where I, I did all these, uh, we, we went down from 40 something to 12, 13, 14. It was, it was some, some, some uh, improvements a little bit better than what you see here. Uh, and um, uh, again, the same uh, time spent on garbage collector uh, on top, 217 before at the bottom. 217 after, and you see that the time spent on garbage collector drops from 3.28 to 2.38. Uh, it's a small drop, it's a percentage metric, uh, but it's a drop of close to 30%. Uh, and um, in this case, uh, the web response time, it drops from 133 to 129. Uh, so, uh, that's, that's real gain in your application. Uh, Will be two to three before and after. Uh, then it's very similar to what we see on the uh, 217. Uh, remember that when I was showing um, and explaining the algorithm for the uh, Ruby 22x, that's where the incremental garbage collector got uh, introduced. And, um, and but that was not, wasn't wasn't about improving throughput or web response time. It was all, all about shortening pause times. And it wasn't guaranteed that um, that that the two the incremental DC would improve your, your throughput and web response time. Uh, and then we're going to see that when I compare the two one act, two one seven before, two one seven after, and two two three after. Uh, and uh, so two two three before and after very similar to two one seven before and after. Um, the time spent in GC also drops from two thirty eight to one point four, um, a smaller drop in this case. Uh, Web response time uh, during this test, it went drop, it dropped from 137 to uh, 130 milliseconds. Uh, and uh, this is 217 before and after. Um, here you see that the 22X, it's, uh, it's actually still a little bit worse than the 20X. Uh, that's probably just a little bit of noise in my test. You see that on the right side, the, 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 the chart kind of goes up and down. So uh, probably I was doing something else with my laptop when I was trying to test these scenarios. And uh, um, what I really got into, into the real app in my testing environment, uh, when I tested 217, 217 after comparing to 223 after, I, got, I consistently got um, an improvement of about five, four, five, seven milliseconds uh, of web response time. So, uh, but again, the two the two two x uh, the two um, two two x algorithm, the incremental DC, is not supposed it's not guaranteed that it's going to give you uh, a better throughput and response time. Uh, not always, it's not guaranteed. But I kind of felt like because my results on those were consistently a little bit better. I mean, five six milliseconds, maybe it's just noise. But uh, when it's consistently getting the same results, test after test, run after run after run. It's, I kind of felt that uh, my application was in a sweet spot where the change for the incremental garbage collector did help me, um, did help um, the application, right? Uh, and uh, so this is 21X. So in this scenario, I'm just comparing uh, 21X before and after. And uh, it, um, uh, 21X, 217 after, and 223 after. Oh my God, so many numbers. Uh, so it's dropped from 238 to uh, comparing those two, one is 238% and the other one is 1.4. Um, here the uh, web response time, it barely changed. Uh, this case is pretty much noise, most likely. Uh, and, uh, and that's, with that, I kind of um, conclude what I wanted to talk to you guys here today. If you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. Uh, thank you. Uh, 
Um, so the question was if this comes with more memory usage. Yes, so you're, you're just telling the garbage collector to allocate more memory. In my case, that was happening. Um, I increased the heap, and then I have more memory for my transactions to allocate 9,000 something uh, objects, and so the garbage collector runs less often because there is more memory available for him to run. Uh, yeah, so the question is trading memory for time? Yeah, exactly. So since, since I have more memory and in the, in the in the machines, uh, that's what I was doing. I was giving the Ruby VM more memory so it has more, uh, more room to operate and so you need to run the garbage collector less often. What tool? Uh, so the question is what tool I use to measure the garbage collector? Uh, I use New Relic. Um, and um, so when we install New Relic in our application, we start seeing all these things. And um, so I didn't use, actually, I didn't use New Relic to test. Uh, New Relic is how I was getting these results. Um, but I, what I used to do my load test, I just use a Apache Benchmark tool. I was just putting a small little load in my application uh, to get the garbage collector to run as fat as, as the, with the same pressure that I was getting in my production. So. All right, so the question was if, so these, these, these uh, charts that I have are indeed from a simple application. Uh, it's not my real application. Uh, and, uh, but what I get on my, on my um, real application, and uh, so uh, one of the applications in the staging environment, I got about 10% uh, web response time increase. Uh, and uh, in production, those numbers are a little, a little smaller. Production, I have way more cash than the staging environment. Um, these, these is, this was one of the APIs. In some other APIs, uh, there was one that I couldn't see any change in production. I saw some changes in the staging environment, five, six to 10% improvement in the staging environment in production was the same. Uh, and um, at, at after, after the end of all these, uh, pretty much all APIs were using Ruby 2.2x with these configuration params. There was actually one of the APIs that I used pretty much the same parameters for more than one application because they have the same, object, the same range of uh, object allocation. It was around 9,000. Uh, but there was another application that uh, I had to change because it has a memory footprint a little bit different from the others. So we used a different uh, set of parameters. Um, okay, so the question was, was the before and after values. The after values are those the ones that I put in here. Uh, the before is the default experience. Uh, Sorry, the constants, you know. Yeah, hold on. Oh, yeah, okay, okay so I didn't. Yeah, sorry, I didn't actually put the numbers in here. I, I can send you some of those. Uh, those are, very yeah, yeah, I can send you some of the samples that I use for these ones. Uh, and the before was what is in the default, uh, the default version of Ruby. Uh, um, in the in the um, in the source code in some of these references here, you can find the default, and I, I can point that to you. Uh, to, uh, to you. Maybe you can make the slides available. And, and yeah, uh, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, I can do that. Um, uh, I can definitely do that. Put the default values in uh, the ones I use for these. That really nice. yep. okay. that's, a, that's a pretty good question. Uh, so the question was, um, how did I change these parameters if I did it systematically or uh, if I used, um, or if I changed to anything? At the beginning, I was, so is, is that, is the, yeah, yeah. All right. so at the beginning, I was, I was learning and testing and, and change all of them. Uh, after reading some of these parameters, you kind of, some of them, they go along together. So if I change one, you have to change the other. Uh, but because in the 2.1x, we have 11 parameters, and not all of them are very easy for you to digest and change and to monitor the change, um, I, I didn't really use, I, I kind of got, after doing a lot of tests, I kind of get an idea on the ones I want to change. Uh, but that, the, the interesting point about the question is, there is actually, after I, I went through all these, I found some, uh, some documentation about not everywhere is affordable for you to test, right? So if you're a physicist uh, uh, working with a hydron super collider, you can't test a lot. You have to be very careful with the test that you're doing, how, which patterns you're gonna use. Um, and I was actually really curious on trying to uh, investigate some of those algorithms and see if from all those parameters, if there is a, a better, a sweeter combination that's gonna fit better with my application. Never really get time to do that. So the answer is at the end, I really used some of the parameters that I felt um, was, it helped doing my tests. You see, uh, I have a, a 90,000 something uh, object uh, allocation. So uh, if I give memory to the Ruby machine to allocate the memory, if I, if I give enough memory to the Ruby VM to allocate those objects without having to run the GC all the time, 
then at least for my application, it's going to take care of the GC is not going to be it's not going to be necessary for me to run that often. And when I got to that point, I, I was I was uh, satisfied with the value that I was getting uh, for, for for the for those parameters. I think I think you're absolutely correct. Um, I I got to um, I I presented this talk in a conference in in, uh, in Europe, and um, I met a guy in there who was a, a physicist turned to developer. Huh. Oh my gosh. He oh, do, oh my gosh. Uh, so and he actually told me about the Gucci tables, you know, to orthog orthogonal, um, orthogonal something. Uh, don't remember the top of my head, but um, and he w he was going to that. He is he's the one that who mentioned about um, um, these examples where not every not in not in all industries you can test. It's affordable to test as many options you have. You have to be very, you have to study very well which parameters you're going to change, and then you run your test because running the test is really costly. For me here, running these tests, changing these parameters is not costly. I can't afford doing that, but I'm pretty sure there is a better combination of parameters that would make it better. Uh, so, yeah. So the question was if if I should uh, suggest to change the default value for these parameters, and the, the answer is no, and that we shouldn't do that because, uh, the, the, like you were saying. These parameters are based on what is your memory allocation. So if, you, if your application allocates 10,000 objects per transaction, you, the default value is all, is all good for you. Maybe you're never, you, your app is never going to be in a point where you need these parameters to be tuned. Uh, so if, like, like, uh, 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 like they said in, in one of the other presentations, maybe 99% of the Rails apps in production does not need to change these. Uh, but maybe you're in the one percent, and, and I actually were one of one of our apps were a couple. All right, guys, uh, thank you so much.